blocks. So what we're going to do now is to bind this phantom here to uh, the T18MZ. And why are we going to do that? Because I just think it's much more convenient than the Strokton's Vita that came with the Phantom 2. And I'm going to walk you through how to bind it and also how to program your Futaba. It should be more or less on all models the same. So it doesn't matter if you own a 14 or if you own an 18 or a 10. So the system is almost identical. I don't know about the uh, T8J, so I can't um, really talk about that. But I think there's a lot of other videos that are um, showing that uh, and uh, as I said the system is basically the same for all the transmitters. So. so what we first do is to assign a new model um, to the, the whole programming stuff. Um, so we just choose new here. And then we take it an airplane on aileron and normal elevator and that is perfect for the beginning. So one thing which is very important is that you choose um, FASST multi and not FAST7 um, with respect to the system type because FAST7 won't um, really work with all the channels, you can bind it all that stuff, but it won't work with the channel. So we choose FAST Multi. So that's it for the transmitter programming. Uh, we can also give um, a quickly a name um, to the Phantom. So I just call it um, the Y I. Phantom 2, of course, and then we also find this easily in the TX. So then, um, when we go to the level of binding, I quickly turn this off and get my Phantom here a little bit closer. Um, turn this little thingy on. And what we now see on the bottom of the Phantom is that there's a uh, small red light in a hole. There's also a push button there. So what we do in order to bind it, and I move the transmitter here a little bit closer again, just push this in until it blinks, then turn on the Futaba. And once it's there, we release it and it shall turn to green and it's binded now. With respect to the assignment, we would need to have um, the Phantom connected um, to obviously the computer program that came with it. So I'm taking my tablet here, just connecting it quickly and start up Start up the Phantom 2 um, program. What you can see now is that the assistant is, um, is there. Um, on the very top there's Phantom 2 written and that's exactly what we need at the moment. We quickly check on the stick if the uh, common stick calibration is showing any movement so that, that's very good. Um, it indicates that it's binded, it's working, uh, stuff is assigned and let's go to the programming of the TX in order to get the uh, X1 and X2 correctly assigned but also in order to do the calibration. So now in terms of the calibration what we need to do is um, first start um, calibration mode and then we check if the sticks are moving in the right direction. So for example, aileron, if I move it to right, it must, um, the common stick calibrations arrow should be point to right and vice versa. So we move them all quickly to check. Rudder is working okay. Throttle is working okay. Once we have done that, 
moving the stuff from side to side, making sure that everything is um, in the middle again. Right, go to the both sides and we can pinch finish and now it should be perfectly green. So we also need to do that obviously with the sticks monitor. So the functions have been assigned by the Futaba at the moment. We will um, reassign them on a, on a later point, but obviously for the calibration start it, it should be fine. So you can see X1 is currently um, assigned to the switch SE. And X2 is also somewhere, I don't know where it is, I think it's auxiliary um, 5, so we can also quickly um, reassign it directly in order to speed that whole process here up. We go to function, um, so X1 we said is um, SE. We check on the screen here, SE, and this is basically the thing that controls the gimbal. You can see it in the back moving. So we want to reassign it, or I want to reassign it to RS, and that is now this one controlling the gimbal. Move it a little bit backward and forward, so you have it calibrated already. And then I think the X2 is auxiliary 5. And that's basically the, I think it's the failsafe, let, let me check that um, quickly. So I would move that to SC, right, and we need to program the correct way of the words. And then we still have the X2, which we need to um, calibrate. And I move that to SD. Uh, probably remove it off the wards then again and make sure that all the sticks um, are centered as well. The gimbal is centered or at least the indication for the gimbal is centered. Right, so we're finished here. So what we need to do now is to program the quick, um, the, the failsafe mode here. Um, let me give you some view on that, so you can see how the stuff is moving here. So I'm going now a little bit closer to the um, screen of my Windows tablet, so you can see something. And we just need to program the way now for the control mode switch. AUX5. So we need to modify the curve a little bit in order to get this um, in order to get this going perfectly. Um, what we need to do first is select here um, normal. So you can see the first position uh, would be normal and then we make sure that the last position is then um, fail safe on that one. Huh? Make sure that normal is in the very beginning correctly um, assigned. So just move this. Just move this here a little bit down until normal is there. So you see that clearly in the screen. Right. And then that's also normal and we want to have um, this position um, want to have that's normal and want to have this position being the failsafe so we just um, modify the curve on the very end a little bit and now we are on failsafe so what we are now going to do is change the screen mode of the Phantom 2 application to, um, to Nozo M and then it gets a little bit more complicated. So you already saw that the, 
the control modes which many has changed but uh, we will reassign that perfectly now in that level or in that screen and so if you only need to have failsafe the, the phantom the phantom uh, too many would be good enough but we want to have all the functions that we had on the previous transmitter and this is why we're going to do some more work on that so what you first want to do and remember we had all on the SC switch here uh, let me put that a little bit uh, more in front so that was this switch here so you can see the menu is moving right and what we first want to do is have it like on the original transmitter so choosing here manual right and then we want to have opti mode and gps so it, it still is on failsafe at this point in time because we have um, set it so in the previous menu but we can just go back and make sure that all this is matching perfectly um, so we need to go here a little bit more on the bottom and what we have now is um, a perfect adjusted manual attitude mode and GPS mode. So what's not solved at the moment is that we can't choose the failsafe mode so we will apply a mixer afterwards and I'll show you how to do that. So what you also need um, basically is that we say failsafe, it should be uh, go home and landing so we can already adjust that and gimbal is okay and we want to have the uh, intelligent orientation control so we click that um, thingy here and what we can see now is that as we have assigned the X2 switch it's already working so on the very top it's home lock on the middle it's course lock and on the end is off or on the very low end it's off so let me show the transmitter here as well so you get uh, the points I'm talking about um, again home lock course lock off we don't want to have it uh, in that way I would like to have it off on the very top and uh, not on home look as we can see it uh, right now so we change that as well so going going into the transmitter menu as well um, we need to quickly find the switch it should be SD and the SD should be assigned I think it's air brake, but we can see it uh, very quickly on the screen when we move right. So that is the, uh, the air brake. So we just need to turn this um, basically around. Um, that's one way to do it. Or we can just um, reverse. I would say in the linkage menu, we go to reverse and then what we see is that this is already working perfectly and let me show that so seeing the menu and the transmitter and this is how we want it so now one question remains how we, how do we get um, uh, the failsafe um, correctly working and that's what we're going to do with a mixer so I would need um, to have another switch and I will choose uh, the one here so it goes into failsafe uh, once I pull it. What I need to do first is obviously assign um, um, something to the specific function. So I'm going to take auxiliary 4 and choose the SH switch and then you can see it's uh, the switch um, the correct switch and then what we're going to do we need to mix this to SC so that's um, entering programmable mixes then choose that one we take the master would be auxiliary 4 and make the slave aux 5 obviously auxiliary 4 to auxiliary 5 right 
and then you can already see that this is moving so we just need to make sure that there is some mixing applied so I'm going a little bit down with that and that sh should do it basically let me see and quickly turn this on and so what we can see now is it's not perfectly correct working so let me show you quickly my tablet here so if I'm pulling so it goes uh, beyond that's that's not perfect so we need to turn this down or reverse it so I, I'm choosing to turn this down uh, sorry turn it up back on some degrees until it hits fail safe Oh, it's not perfectly visible, but we'll correct that. So you can see this is now on failsafe. And that's perfect. And that's the mix, which is now programmed. Also, if I have it in, uh, in the middle position, it's working absolutely perfect. Uh, going from auto to failsafe, if I have it on the very low position, going from GPS to failsafe, and that's how we apply the mixes. Quick, quick test at the very end. Let me make sure that you see all the stuff here. First, uh, let me pull that also a little bit close so we can see that the gimbal is working right so this makes most sense for me if you have, I have the um, this one here on the very down uh, level the gimbal is level and if I turn it to the very up level it points to the ground that makes perfect sense to me so that's working we also have um, the stuff calibrated let me quickly check on the on the control mode switch so that's manual you can see it moving and that's gps and in the middle is otti that's working as well and so the gains are basically unchanged um, they're pre-programmed in the phantom 2 application and we also want to have the intelligent um, orientation control enabled so as said before this is off then we have course lock and home lock on the on the very bottom that's also working and so that's it so now we do a test flight and see if the stuff is is absolutely correct so just a very quick flight we're going to stay in a, in a manual mode we're not activating gps whatsoever that's not that would not uh, run very well here in the building but just to uh, demonstrate that it works um, Giving some throttle. Perfectly.